All right, let's get right to the details and where we go from here. Stephen Lieb is the president of Lieb Capital Management. Peter Schiff is the president of Euro Pacific Capital. These gentlemen are both authors. They've both seen good markets and bad, uh, and they both uh, probably agree uh, about everything that Alan just said. But there is a key difference between them. Peter Schiff, you think that, in fact, uh, a recession, a deep recession, is necessary, not only inevitable. Absolutely. You know, the root of the problem is, in response to the most irresponsible monetary policy in U.S. history, American citizens borrowed and spent trillions of dollars. And now the institutions that loaned the money are going broke because we can't pay it back. And this bailout isn't going to change the fact that we're broke. As a society, we need to go back away from borrowing and spending and towards producing and saving again. And the government is trying to interfere with the free market. And if they succeed with this bailout, what they're going to do is bring on a crisis far greater than the one they're trying to avoid. They're going to destroy the dollar. And then we're going to see hyperinflation. We're going to see prices and interest rates going sky high. And there's nothing we're going to be able to do about that. Stephen? I don't know where to start, Ellie. Um... For one thing, the bailout doesn't necessarily have to be a losing thing. I mean, the headline in Barron's today is that actually the Treasury could end up making money on this bailout. Now, it's $700 billion. That's a huge number. But do you know how much we've already lost because of this crisis in terms of lower equity value in our homes, lower stock prices? It's in the trillions. So how does $700 billion all of a sudden uh, counteract trillions of dollars that's been lost? How does $700 billion that can turn into a profit for the <laughs> Treasury somehow turn in? Why are you laughing? Well, because I mean, this comes right out. And, you know, Ali, one other thing, and, you know, just sort of anecdotal. When you see Barney Frank and... And Hank Paulson, people whose lifestyles, political persuasions could not be more different. The only thing they share in common is a very, very high intellect embracing on this. Guess what? You do have an issue. Now, I know Peter's a little bit brighter than those guys, so I'll bow to him, but this is a very serious thing. Now, Peter's for the free market. No bailout. I'll tell you what's going to happen. You know what? The government, who, which already owns Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, de facto AIG, you can add to that list almost surely without a bailout, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, almost every other financial institution with the possible exception of one that's located in right, Omaha, but, and but, that's called Berkshire Hathaway. But the government's not going to solve these problems. It's going to make them worse. You don't what is going to solve the problem, then, there is, is look, really letting nothing happen going to solve this problem? No, we have a problem, right? We're broke. We consumed ourselves into bankruptcy. Understood. Our factories are gone. But your We've child just set, phony set economy. fire to your, your yeah. curtains. Do look, you lecture the child look, or do you put out the fire? See, look, we, we can't. We, we, we're, we're setting a bigger fire. You're talking about the fact that real estate prices are falling. They have to to fall. They're too high. Well, they need ridiculous. to go a lot lower. And, we can't Ellie, interfere and, with that. No, I mean, you can't. First of all, you can interfere. And as <laughs> Barron's points out today, it's pretty simple. All of a sudden, if you free up the credit system, housing prices will stabilize. The money that it's, the government is we buying can't stabilize will stabilize. Housing prices well, are too high. Uh, Peter, who says you? The, the market. Who's They're no, too the high? The market doesn't the, say. So the market uh, says there's history. not enough credit. You can, people and me, can't afford the money. Freeze in time for a second. Don't even think of anything else because we're going to come back to this. We are going to stick around and stick around. This is important because this is possibly the debate you should have heard on television last night uh, with two different people with different philosophies explaining what the good and bad of this is. Your phone calls and Twitter messages are next on this special live edition of Your Money. Stay with us. We're coming right back. emergency edition of Your Money. As the details of a financial bailout plan come out of Capitol Hill, a lot of folks are still going back to the original debate. Should there even be a bailout? Let's debate it. Stephen Lieb is the president of Lieb Capital Management. Peter Schiff is president of Euro Pacific Capital. Gentlemen, you, you disagree. You really strongly <laughs> disagree on what should be. Peter, you don't think that we can step in here that, that a big bailout is suddenly going to make this right? No. All, first of all, all the smaller bailouts along the way have made the situation worse. All the government can do is create inflation. The government doesn't have any money. They're going to print it. Now, they're going to try to con the Chinese and the Japanese and uh, the Saudis into loaning us more money. Money, but they're done. We've borrowed and spent ourselves into bankruptcy. That's the problem. It's the fundamentals of the economy. You know, I wrote a book called Crash Proof, How to Profit from the Coming Economic Collapse. The economy is collapsing exactly the way I wrote that it would, but also in that book, I was afraid that the government would do exactly what they're doing now. And this is worse. We're going to die from the cure, not the disease. Okay, well, I just have to one-up Peter. I wrote a book called The Coming Economic Collapse about two years before Peter wrote his book. 
<laughs> and I said that if housing prices ever declined, it would make the tech bubble look like a picnic. But we would have to get out of it. And here's why. Jim Lehrer told us last night, there's no difference between economic security and national security. If we let this economy go into the tubes, 25 or 30 percent employment, Peter mentioned China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, forget about it. Our access to resources is gone. In the past week, lost in these headlines, the, the president of Iran, taking advantage of our economic weakness, said, I made a mistake. You know what his mistake was? I cooperated with the nuclear inspectors. No more. They're gone. I'm going to do what I want. It's the same uh, two weeks ago, Russia marches into a prospective NATO country and takes it over and controls that oil pipeline. We've got to keep this economy as strong as we can the, for as long as we can so we can build alternative energy can, infrastructure. The government can't keep it strong, but it can make it a lot weaker. These problems are severe. The free market, weaker? look, the free market can solve them. The, we can't solve them with a printing press. You want to go, go to, go to Zimbabwe the, and see the, how look, well it works. Yeah, Peter's this, comparing us to Zimbabwe. No, wait, yes, it somehow is. Somehow you may not like George Bush, but he is not Robert Mugabe. No, we're he is not Robert Mugabe. Look, They're a little bit look, different. Look, a look, little look, bit different. Government doesn't work. Making the government bigger, Peter, printing money, buying Peter, up debt, Peter, it's not going to solve but the this problem. This doesn't make any sense. Look at Barron's today. You should have read it before you came in. I hate to tell you. The lead story in Barron's today is the Treasury Department. Department. If this works out, we'll make money with this seven hundred no, billion. Like, the Maybe. government is saying you're going to make article? money. No, These barons. Guys, I don't barons care. is saying no, you don't care about barons. No. You don't care about the financial look, media. I, I know you what don't I've care been about saying. Barney Frank. Listen, I want to look forward for a second. I want to look forward. We talked about the presidential debates. We talked about Jim Lehrer trying to push these candidates on how this, how the economy is a national security issue. Um, why didn't we hear the candidates say there's going to be pain ahead, and this is the kind of pain we're going to have to take? Hey, the, did they? The did candidates they really don't understand No, that's a good point. And they certainly don't want to level with the American public. They want to be Santa Claus. They don't want they don't want to tell the voters that hey, you've spent too much money. You can't buy a new car. You can't buy a new plasma TV. You can't buy a new iPod. You got to save your money. You got to work. You've got to accept the lower standard of living because that's the reality. Well, well, nobody wants to be the bearer of bad news. No, Christine, I, I think that Americans know this in their heart. I mean, over the last 20 years, real median incomes in this country have gone down. So we've already been paying the price. What Peter said is yesterday's news. What we need and the real problems, and I do give the candidates a little credit on this. We've got to get past this. And yes, we may pay a higher price in terms of higher inflation. But the real problem, and I know it's been put on, you know, page A40 or A50 in the newspapers, is resources. We've got to figure out a way of building alternative energy infrastructure. If we don't do it, then it's totally but, game over. But the and government's not going to figure it out for no, us. No, but who won the Second World War? But not, wasn't because I'm asking you, who won the Second World what, War? What does that have to do with anything? It has a lot to do with it, because this is a problem that will cost several trillion dollars to fix. Who the, won the Second World War? The, the government the is not... Free enterprise. Okay, so why didn't the Soviet Union, with all their government planning, why, didn't, why, did, why did they crumble? Why didn't they take okay, over the world? This is what it comes down to. This is an interesting point, Peter. So those of you who say that we shouldn't have a bailout, or it should be very small, or we shouldn't, we shouldn't deal with this, are saying that it is socialist in nature. It is, it is anti-capitalist to intervene in the private markets when the private markets fail. Peter, uh, 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 Stephen, but what the is the argument? The private didn't fail. It's government intervention that made it no. fail. Well, no, okay, what, what, what's it's the solution? Greenspan. What is the argument in favor of the fact that the government should get involved in capital markets because when they've made mistakes? I, because I'm going to, you know, show how contradictory Peter's arguments are. If the government doesn't get involved, how many Wall Street firms stand today? Maybe Fannie not. May. Maybe they need can to go I, bankrupt. Can I answer? Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac have been taken over by the government. But they were government all, entities all, already. Fannie, AIG is de facto part of the government. They were not a government agency. They were the largest insurer in the country. Right now, before anything else, the government brings you uh, mortgages, get, controls the mortgage on your house and the insurance. Let this go any further, and the government will control all the banks in the but country. This is what they're doing. And is that what you want? Steve, how did is I that know? what you want? How did That's I know? Kind of when I was coming on television years ago and predicting that Fannie and Freddie were going bankrupt, I knew they were going bankrupt, and people thought that was crazy. It's because I understood the impact of the government. Yeah, but you on don't understand the impact of not doing this. No, yes, if I do. No, you don't. It's going to be bad. It's self-contradictory. Let's see what the... Let's see what the contradicting yourself. No, let's not. see what our viewers totally. want to talk about. It's your turn to talk to us on Twitter. Give us a call.